How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Muzo here with another video and I'm here to talk to you about RGBs because there's multiple different types of RGBs that are out there. I know it can be pretty confusing, especially when you're new to building PCs. You have RGBs, you have ARGBs, you have SATA power, you also have controllers, and there's three pins, there's four pins. It can get completely confusing. When you finish this video, you're gonna be an RGB pro in no time you'll know the ins and outs of RGB lighting for PCs. If you already have an idea of how lighting works and the basic concept of it, I have all the different chapters down listed in the description box down below. And I also have some of my favorite RGBs that you can hook up with your PC down below in the description box too. And it will also make your PC even stand out more. So there is no time like the present. So let me tell you everything you need to know about RGBs. First off, I gotta say, if you find this kind of content very useful, make sure you go down and hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you wanna join the big wonderful fan bam where we love to talk about PC and tech stuff, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button. And let's get straight to RGBs. So first off, I'm gonna go through RGBs 101. It's a good idea to understand the very basic concept of how RGB lighting works. So if you studied any type of color science, whether if it was in your science class or if it was in your art class, you'll understand the very primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Because in order to create a color, you have to combine two different primary colors, such as purple, which is blue and red. So then purple becomes a secondary color. So you're probably wondering exactly why isn't it called RBY instead? I'm glad you were thinking that because red, blue, and yellow primary colors don't exactly work with lighting as much as you think it does. It works with paint, but not with lighting. Because when you create a color such as purple, you're mixing two different types of primary colors. When you combine the two, you're actually removing some sort of light away from this color. And the trick is with RGBs, you're actually combining two different colors with light. And the thing with RGBs, you're combining two separate colors, which will not remove the light from your retina. RGBs has been around a lot longer than you think it has. Such as a monitor or a TV, they refrain some sort of RGB in it. As from your monitor emits all those pretty colors into your retina, as light truly has no color. Hence is how you can actually make white out of RGBs. That's really a simplified breakdown of how they got 16 million colors out of RGBs. So let's now talk about the difference between RGBs and ARGBs. This is actually very important to know because they are actually different in every single way. If you're new to this, this is something to actually keep in mind. So make sure to pay attention and be very mindful about this. RGB, exactly how it sounds. This is actually a more affordable header and more cheaper for manufacturers to produce. RGB headers have four pins, which equals out to 12 volts and are not addressable, which is just really a fancy way of saying that these lights work in a series. So therefore you cannot create multiple colors out of regular RGBs. So if your RGBs are red, you cannot separate it and put red and green. RGBs have four different pins. One is 12 volt, one is G, R, and you have B, which are the combinations that you need to create those beautiful lights. Now, let me explain a RGB. You guessed it right, addressable RGBs. ARGBs actually have a much lower voltage at five volts and actually emits better color than your standard RGBs. Because these are ARGBs and addressable, you can actually work with these in parallel. And you can also successfully create multiple colors. So if you have an ARGB fan, you can make it turn to different colors if you so choose to. ARGBs are also three pin which is another big difference from RGBs. So the three pins are a lot different than what you would get out of your RGBs. Of course, your RGBs were 12 volt, G, R, and B. Now with ARGBs, you have five volt, digital, and you also have a ground. If your motherboard doesn't have this, it's not a big deal because there is a way to solve that. There is a way you still can get ARGBs. Of course, this has to go with cost. So you're probably wondering, are RGBs and ARGBs compatible with each other? Of course, you have different voltages. You have five volts and 12 volts. Of course not. 
more than likely if you attempt to put a four pin into a three pin, you're probably gonna fry it and the same vice versa. So the best option is don't even really think about it. Let's go another route, which I will explain in this very instance. Ever since RGB lighting has been introduced into the PC market, it really has never been the same. Some brands don't even want to acknowledge RGBs and refuse to take any parts of it as they feel that it is just a fad that is just waiting to fade away. I doubt this will be the case since RGB lighting is high in popularity and it still continues to grow. This is also a very important note to take because not all RGBs will be willing to play nice with each other. I know some of you guys had to find this out the hard way, but if you are having those issues and you want to figure a way on how to get your RGBs compatible, make sure you click the card above me because there is software out there that can definitely help you out. If you haven't built a PC just quite yet, it's a good thing you're watching this very video because now you can really take notes before you start purchasing all your PC components that you want. You have Asus Aura, you have Gigabyte Fusion, and you also have MSI's Mystic Lighting. You have Ace Rocks Polychrome. Must I really continue with this? It is a very important factor when you are building a system and you really want your RGBs to work compatibly with each other, make sure you pay attention to each manufacturer that you purchase because the most important part of your build is your motherboard. So whichever motherboard that you decide to get will kind of really be the determined factor that you will, what kind of RGB system or ecosystem that you'll have for your PC. And of course they do have options to where you can purchase motherboards without RGBs and there's still a way you can cope without that. There are other systems out there that you actually don't need RGB headers on your motherboards, which I will explain in a minute. So if you decide to get an ASUS motherboard, make sure you purchase an ASUS GPU with it. It'll just make your life 10 times easier. The best thing not to do is don't mix and match by getting a Ace Rock polychrome board and trying to mix it with a Gigabyte GPU, which those two systems will have two separate kind of RGB lighting. Not only will you have to install extra software, they will also have a problem and they will conflict with each other. But the good thing is it won't damage your system at all, even if you have a different branded type of RGB. And of course there is an exception. If you get Corsair or if you get Logitech and some sort of peripheral for your PC, it will not affect your RGB's ecosystem in any type of way. So if you got Logitech or Corsair, just make sure that it says that it is compatible with your board because there is some that it may not work on, which is another headache in itself. Now, another thing I gotta talk to you about is, especially if you don't have RGB headers or if you just don't want to rely on your motherboard manufacturer's RGB system, you can always get RGB controllers. What a controller is, is exactly how it sounds. You can get either RGB lighting through SATA power and have a manual controller, or you can actually have a RGB controller into SATA and have a software to manage the RGB lighting for you. Personally, I think one of the best ones out there is Corsair's RGB controllers. If you get Corsair's controllers, they do have the best RGBs you can get on the market, especially if you want to ignore the whole motherboard manufacturers RGBs, I personally go with Corsairs. They have IQ, which makes everything super simple, super easy, and very easy to customize it exactly how you want it. Now, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, make sure you post it down in the comments down below. And also, if you enjoy content just like this, and you wanna join the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button and where we love to talk about PC and tech stuff. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here as it is the same for my TikTok and IG as well. Hey, fam bam, guys, how do you feel about RGBs? Do you like them or you don't like them? Let me know in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.